Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, folks, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, we, it's interesting. Today's down um, a little bit in both markets. Market seems, you know, the gold market and the equity market seem to kind of follow on each other. You That's, know, one's down, the other's down, both of them are up. Both of them are up strong. I know. You know, from first of October. So right. um, I thought that might happen. So I guess if the SPs are strong to year end, the gold market may follow it. Um, yeah, that's what, you know, we get, we get, and, and Tim, it's, you know, I put a chart up a little bit earlier. You know, the dollar, so the dollar seems to be ruling all the markets. So what happened is that the dollar, since July 14th, Yesterday was the first time that it was ever down five days in a row. From July 14th, it had only been down two days in a row. It kept coming back. But check this out what it did, man. It came back with a it was down five days in a row, then came back with a vengeance and actually went back inside the channel line. <laughs> so that's what. Wow. Yeah, I know. Exactly. So yeah. it's up 800 ticks, which is almost a penny, you know, which is pretty intense. Well, they got some stuff on the S and P's that kind of follow. The market's down, uh, like the equity market's down five days in a row. Eighty-three uh, percent of the time, the market will be down lower within five days, and actually, it's, it's, it works the same way as the upside. So, what I'm saying is, a lot of times, momentum kind of rules. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to get down five days in a row. Um, That's correct. So I'm, I'm thinking that that I'm thinking you know. If it works the same way as the equity market, you may still see another lower, lower uh, coming in the next several days. It's, it's a possibility. You know? Yeah, I don't follow the the dollar that no, much. No, but that's good so. to know. I'll keep my eye on that, man. I I, I appreciate that. No, I know they, because it's like what's interesting right now with the S and P is that you know we were down fifty two, we're only down twenty nine, but it's like that fought, we're at forty three eighty, and that forty three eighty seven looks like it wants to get up there so that'll really be intriguing if it does because then the s p will actually you know at the end of the day only be down like you know uh what 20 points versus 52. Yeah, 20 point. that's a whole different well, ball you game you know you know you know what it's running into it's running into that september 21st gap yes yes and uh, right. it hit that gap here the other day on liar volume uh actually yesterday was up uh, actually, here's another interesting thing. Uh, the market was up four days in a row going into yesterday. Four days in a row predict the market will be higher 73% of the time. And that's just, it goes back about five years. Okay. So the odds are still uh, that the market will be higher within five days where it is right now. And the more times you test the gap, yeah. uh, the, the more times you're going to lightly eat through it. Uh, so, and we tested that gap again today. We had a higher, a little bit higher higher than we had a couple of days ago. Yes. And so, uh, to me, this is just a sideways consolidation. It's not backing away from that gap. I'm thinking it's building some energy to bu uh, bust through it. No, no, so, listen, man, I, I, I get you. And what Tim's saying here, folks, this is what's so cool. This whole testing procedure, and whether it's, you know, testing highs, testing lows, testing swings, testing gaps, um, it's really cool because each test releases information that you want to pay attention to, you know. And it's pretty wild, Tim, that, you know, this is where the patient still comes in again, right? But the reality is, is that when you do test, you know, two, three times, each time it releases more information, which is pretty cool, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, yeah. you know, you either have the volume behind the move, it can break it or each time. It gets lighter and lighter, but it can spook everyone because they can get the fast price destruction simultaneously, you know? Yep, yep, I, I agree with you. I, I think we're going to eat through it. Actually, it's, it's, uh, let's take a chart. Uh, this okay. is kind of getting the horse in front, front of the car. Sure, the okay, Wh which one? Let's take a look at chart six. Six, okay, let me see. Do we, do we one, two, three, four, five? Bingo, I got it. Okay, cool. Yep. All right, we kind of looked at this uh, on Tuesday when we were talking about it. And, and actually, in a, in a nutshell, you need a sign of week, or you need uh, like a selling climax. And you got to have, a, right after the selling climax, right after that, you got to have a buying climax. 
And that's how bottoms are made. If you get a selling climax, no buying climax, you're going to have another selling climax until finally you do get a buying climax. And that's what marks bottoms. And uh, Marty Swag figured this out years ago. Yeah. And uh, and so this bottom window is the Marty Swag breast thrust indicator. I put it into a a, a form. Tried to describe. Uh, or I put what he uh, defined as a uh, or the swag indicator. I put it in, in a graphic form here. We kind of had a little bit different, but this works pretty close. Yes. But in a nutshell, uh, you need a, a reading below point four. Then within 10 days, you need a reading above, above 0.6 on that bottom indicator. And that bottom indicator is advancing issues uh, divided by total issues, and you take a 10-day average of it. And so uh, we did hit uh, 40 last Thursday, uh, anyhow, uh, and it started to go up from last Thursday, and it hit like 55 and now we're back down to, to 49. I hear the music, uh, so I can hang on. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow down 199, NASDAQ off 99, S&P's off 33. We're coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. The Dow, Dow Industrial Trade now down 190, S&P's are off 92. Uh, no, S&P's off 92, man, oh man. Uh, Nasdaq's <laughs> off 92, S&P's are off 32. We're talking with our Tim, man, Mr. Tim Ord, and we are talking markets right now. So we're on the... Um, um, Zweig. Right. Yes. Yeah, the Zweig uh, breast thrust indicator. So anyhow, uh, this triggered last Thursday. Uh, has to be within uh, 10 days or less. And so that puts us next Thursday, we would be October 19th, that this WAG thrust indicator has to trigger for it to, um, actually, for it to trigger. And if it does trigger, it implies the market is in a, a bull move or has made a immediate term bottom. You know, over the uh, that sideways pattern we had from October or from April, 2022 to April of 2023, we had three uh, Zwag breast thrust indicator uh, trigger in that in that year time frame. Wow! So now we got the potential. Yeah, that was that was an extremely bullish sign. You know, you get one or two is good. You get three, you know, I assume it's a lot better. So that's pretty we're, wild. We're huh? on the yeah. Part. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's just pretty wild, man. I like, you know, I like the idea if it triggers or it doesn't trigger. I mean, that's what's kind of cool yeah. about it. You know what I'm saying? It's like in both ways you're getting information about the market. You know? Yep. Yep. Well, if you go back and you know, you can see it there on the chart back in 2020. You know, coming off of that uh, COVID crash, I guess you want to call it. You know, we had a couple on that uptrend. It, it, you know, even on the, the, the corrections that we had in. In October of 2020, you know, you got these wag throat, uh, threats for us all over the place in there. And uh, so we kind of have the same thing here. We have a potential one to trigger, you know, next week's option expiration week. Yep. And uh, uh, I'm thinking, I got statistics on that where October, what percentage is up, and I'll have it in front of me. But I bet October week is up. For this to trigger, the market has to rally. Uh, in that 10 day time frame. Yes. So if we stall here and really go nowhere for the next three, four or five days, uh, that may ruin the chances of the Zweig thrust indicator right. getting to pl plus or getting to uh, point six. Yes. Because it measures the uh, kind of advanced decline type uh, statistics. So to, for that to have a, in other words, the market has to really be up to show more advancing issues compared to uh, total issues to trigger this indicator. So it's an important indicator that uh, it would trigger uh, for it to trigger over the next several days. And if it doesn't, uh, then that, that, you're right. Then that gives a lot of information. Then we may need more work going sideways or even down. Right. I, I'm right. pretty confident that it's probably going to trigger. Let's we'll see. You know, I, I don't have a crystal ball. But, no, no, no. The, uh, the, the, the cool thing is it's going to release the information, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what it's going to do. So we'll see how that pans out because we'll be talking next Thursday and we'll be able to see where we are. Yes. Uh, so uh, we can uh, skip to another chart. Let's go back to chart five. Okay. And um, I kind of showed this chart before, but uh, this is the... Uh, equity put call ratio readings 
and uh, readings uh, on the the uh, twenty one day. So it measures how many people are actually buying puts compared to calls. Yeah. So when everybody's on the put side, you know, and this is actual. This, these are people not thinking about buying puts. These are people actually bought puts, where it's um, um, so it's it's a it's, it's it's a sentiment indicator, but it gives you uh, it gives you where actually money has gone to, and so the public in general are, are feeling pretty bearish here. Because the bottom one is a 21-day uh, average. That's like a month, month yes. of trading. And it gets above 0.75 or around uh, uh, 0.82 right now. So that's kind of a, a bigger, longer-term uh, trend because you're out a month. So that kind of looks at the bigger picture. So the public's kind of been bearish, uh, or at least the put call or the option players kind of been bearish over the last 30 days. And the five-day... Uh, it's just right below uh, the bullish level, which is 0.8. Uh, but both of them hit point, you know, b- bullish levels here at the last low we had here just a week ago, first part of uh, October. So, sentiment wise, you know, you, that's a good. You want the yes. put call ratio readings where the puts are outnumbering the calls, and that's a good sign because people are leaning bearish here. And to really feed, feed a rally, uh, you need kind of a shorts to be covered type things to really initiate off the bottom, and we kind of have that here. That's the reason why I think this lag thrust indicator may be, uh, you know, lit up. I guess you might say because uh, people are still are still kind of bearish. They're not believing the rally, and that's really what you want to see. No, no, so, I can see that, and, and for a full month, I mean, that's pretty cool because if you actually take a look at, you know, uh, you know, as Tim says, folks, there's an average of 21 trading days in a month. And we actually take a look at this. Now, check this out. This is where it gets this gets really interesting. Where where we are right now on the on the spy at four thirty three. Well, five, ten. Oh my God, fifteen, seventeen. We're at seventeen days. You go back seventeen days, and we're at the same price. <laughs> So yeah. that gets interesting. So you know, and and what happens on a put call ratio? Those puts, folks, are decay in every single day. So you know, this is this is this is intriguing, man. There's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this chart goes back to I think uh, what about 2000, 2000, yeah, two thousand mid four, two, uh, 14. and you can see at all the major lows. You know, we took out any low back there of all the lows we had going back to mid-2014. This indicator popped where it's supposed to pop. Yes. You know, it came into bullish territory. So, And it's doing it right now just on a you know a fairly minor uh, pullback. You know, I think we kind of jumped above a trading range, and now we came back and tested it. And all of a sudden, the put-call ratio uh, surges. So, right. It's, it's, so, you know, the whole, the whole thing leans bullish so far, so... Yeah, because, um, you know, it's, a, it's so intriguing, Tim, and, and folks who have, you know, if you're in front of a computer, the bottom line is that, you know, we came down fast and furious, and we were down like 52 S&P points in about a heartbeat. Now, that being said, it has already taken back 25 of those points pretty quick. <laughs> so that's where it really gets interesting. It's like, okay, really? You know, so we'll see where it shakes yeah. out, but... Actually, if you look on today's S and P's, uh, we're at about sixty-four million shares. Uh, this is on the SPYs, That's- and the previous high we had two days ago at seventy-eight million shares. You know, we got uh, normally all the volume really comes in on a close. I bet today's test of the two days ago, today's Thursday, would be two Z's high because we did touch two Z's high. If you do. If you do it on the SPY, yes. And if you test a previous high on equal or, or greater volume, usually you go through that high. And I bet today's volume will be around at least seventy-eight million shares or within it, two, three percent of that. It will. That's all it needs. Yeah, because it's, it's at sixty-seven right now. Yeah, it, it definitely would. I mean, they, they'll put twenty million into this in a heartbeat. What? what it's only three yeah. thirty. Yeah, it's three thirty-eight. Yeah, yeah. particularly because what does happen, folks. Um, stay right there. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. And what I was going to say, what does happen, folks, if you get any kind of, you know, even a small rally, we're at 43.83 right now, and that number I gave you is a 43.87. It wants to go to that number. 
So if the market participants start seeing that, okay, oh, now we're only down 21 S&P points, guess what? That changes the, the perception of a down market. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oyd, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 146. NASDAQ uh, down 146, rather. Um, NASDAQ's off 77. S&P's are down 26. And we are looking right now at, uh, let's see, I'm looking at the, the put-call ratio chart, Tim. All right. Okay. We're kind of done with that. Okay. So, anyhow, it's basically bullish. Um, let's actually look at a long-term chart of the gold market. Uh, which is chart number three. Okay. I thought, I thought you'd find this real interesting. And it's kind of a, a weird ratio, but it's, you know, it's a monthly, the middle window there of that chart, you know, the chart goes back to, like I said, 80, 19, yeah, 1984, yep. sort of. 84, yeah. Uh, you know, it goes, yeah, a long time ago. And so, anyhow, the middle chart is the monthly XAU gold ratio. And that's, that's all it is, so that's as far as you could go back with that chart. And what seems to work uh, the best is the bottom window, which is the slow stochastics of that ratio. And uh, every time it got down below minus 10, the slow stochastic minus 10, which is all those blue lines across the chart, uh, the market was at an intermediate low. It picked out the 2,000 low. Uh, it picked out the... Uh, 2016 low, uh, picked out the 2000 or uh, the 2019 or can't quite see it. Yeah, it looks like about 2019 low, and and back in uh, two, August of 2022, in other words, about a year ago, it picked out a, a major low. So it measures the momentum of that um, XAU gold ratio on a monthly time frame. So, yeah, the last trigger was August of 2022. I got noted on the chart there. So, and normally what it does, when it gets down below minus 10, it normally goes right back up to plus 80, which which are all the red lines across the chart. Okay. Uh, there's no, there's not a lot of them. The last time we, you know, it it went from uh, 2019 low, then in 2020, it looks like it hit, you know, hit the top pretty good. And that went back to August 2022 low, and you know things would get dicey if, if this bottom indicator got back above plus plus 80. But right now it's it's basically on a buy signal, on a on a monthly. Yeah, time look frame. at that thing, man! Wow. So, so it, it's 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 proven it's it's worth over time. So it's and we know that gold is so cyclical. It's amazing. I mean, so it totally makes sense too. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like buying yeah. an apple, you know what I mean? It's a commodity, yeah. So you're going to see it right. go up and down, right? Cool. Yeah. So, so actually, you know, if you look at that 2000 bottom, it gave a, a buy signal at you know the 2000 time frame, you know, early 2000. Then it, it went up, and those red lines right after it, you know, when the, that ratio goes up too fast, and that flow stochastic gets up too fast, too quick, you know, up, up plus 80. It picked out all those tops going going higher over the next several years. Right. That, that was pretty cool. No, it so. is. And if you were around at that time, folks, okay, what had happened, which was pretty wild, is that once gold yeah, came... We, we were doing... We were we, not we, doing this stuff, but we, we were doing... You know, we were. <laughs> yeah. We were. I, I wish I discovered it back then. I, You know, over the years, I kind of researched and figured out what, what works most of the time. Yeah. And... Um, but yeah, yeah. The, the trouble is, it never really got you out at that top of 2011. You had to do a Bollinger Band thing and and follow that. Well, you know, you know, what, you know what, Tim? The way I got out at that top, right? It was it was a one to two ABC up, man. And it was remember, I think you taught me this. If you go more than a one to one point six one eight down or up, yep. you, you change the trend is like really quick. And it was a one to two. And I said, that's it, man. I'm done. And I was done. I yeah. sold out totally, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, man. I'll, and the high came in like, I don't know, two weeks after that. You know, it kept going higher, but two weeks after that was done. It's like, okay, man. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But if you, look, if you look at that monthly Bollinger Band, you know, it, it kept you out of that market, you know, all the way back down to that 16 low. Oh, yeah. Listen, you know, man, after you showed us that a couple of weeks ago, I love that one, man. 
That's that's yeah, so simple. It's, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, it's pretty. Uh, you know, that's why I'm saying, you know, a lot of times I say I'm a market letter, you know, momentum rules all the indicators. It does. And it really does. It does. You know, so, yeah. um, it does. you know, right now we've kind of been chopped sideways um, on the bigger time frames here. The Bollinger Bands are probably going to start squeezing here in the next couple of months. But momentum-wise, as far as this ratios goes, you know, we, re we reach, you know, rock bottom here. So, um, so on a bigger time frame, I guess you're – a lot closer to a low than a high. So if you get up around plus 80, then you're a lot closer to a high than a low. So yes. we'll have to wait and see how that develops in the coming weeks. But, yes. Or coming month, I guess. But uh, on our shorter term time frame, we can – let me see here what we we can do. Uh, actually, uh, go to chart one. Okay. There we go. And All right. Chart one, anyhow, this is – for some reason, it works really well, but the, the – the second window down from the top is a bullish percent index for the gold miners index flash GDX. And this is on a weekly time frame. And uh, it goes back far as I could take it, which is uh, uh, 2008, looks like. And then I put an RSI to it. So if it goes down too quick, the RSI goes too low. If it goes up too quick, uh, then that's also a signal because it could mean a short term top. And it, it does pretty well picking out actually minor highs or actually decent highs and decent lows. But it gave a signal, I uh, put the signal date on there of August 28, 2023. And a lot of times when it does get a signal, I circled in, in red. Uh, yes, I see that. The times that it gave, yeah. A lot of times, sometimes it goes sideways. You know, a couple of them did. Some, you know, some actually marked a, a decent low right off the bat. Yeah, but a lot of times it either goes sideways or, or down modestly. And the last three we had, it went sideways to down a little bit, including the current one. And so, but uh, over time, it's been really accurate. Uh, so, in other words, when everybody kind of dumps on the market, at least yep. as far as the GDX markets, usually those are huge, uh, huge opportunities. And when everybody gets extremely um, bullish in the market, uh, then that's also extremely bearish because most if this thing goes up too fast, too quick, then the RSI will get up to around you know plus seventy, and that's also a sign for a signal that's gone up too fast. The market okay. will need to uh, to uh, uh, be careful here. But uh, so it generated an August twenty eighth signal, and I think we talked a little bit. This is usually you know the market will drift lower for several weeks before that upturn begins. And I'm thinking that's exactly what's happening here. I think it's, tur it's turning up here the first part of August, and I think it's because uh, the RSI is quite a ways above, you know, 30 now. Uh, so momentum is kind of turning up right here. So I, I think it's the start of, of a little something bigger that may last, I think, probably, you know, previous signals of this type have lasted several months. So I'm thinking we probably could rally it into year end. Uh, we'll put those that, rally know, caps on, Tim. That we're going to have uh -huh. those rally caps on. Tim Owens rally yeah. cap. <laughs> Listen, man, you have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look forward to speaking to you next week, Tim. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, and don't forget, guys. folks, you can uh, reach Tim mm -hmm. every trading day at ord, O R D, hyphen oracle.com. It's ord, hyphen oracle.com. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. <laughs>